the Bible portrait of the new world order. From the day Satan was kicked out of heaven for his rebellion against God Almighty, he has attempted to establish a new world order that will totally rebel against the authority of God. In Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve rebelled against God's spiritual authority. God said, don't eat of the fruit of that tree. It's forbidden. So the forbidden thing they did, and they ate the fruit. Angels with flaming swords drove them out of the paradise into a world of sin, sickness, and suffering. And we have been suffering because of their decision. In Genesis 7, Noah's generation failed God so that God became so disgusted with humanity, he drowned the world. There were eight survivors in that ark. Eight in the Bible is the number of new beginnings. The origins of the new world order can be traced to Genesis chapter 11, where Nimrod built the Tower of Babel. What was the purpose of this tower? The purpose of the Tower of Babel was to remove God off the face of the earth and to worship the mother-child cult. Why? We're covering from Abraham to Armageddon, and this is where we begin. God Almighty commanded Abraham to leave his father's house because his father was an idol worshiper. This is confirmed in Joshua 24, 2. The point is that God does not bless, he does not prosper, and he will not protect an idol worshiper. Thou shall have no other gods before me is not a recommendation. It's an absolute command. 1 Corinthians 10, 14 says, My dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Say that with me. Flee from idolatry. The question is, are you in idolatry? Anything you love more than Jesus Christ is your idol. Anything. Nimrod's name in Hebrew means revolt. He was known as a murderer of innocent men and the rebel against God. He was Satan's dedicated disciple. Babel means confusion. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Babel was later known as the city of Babylon. Historian Josephus said of Nimrod, listen, quote, he gradually changed the government into tyranny and turned men from the fear of God to bring them into constant dependence on his own power. The purpose was total control. Really nothing has control. Our government, when COVID-19 came out, totally controlled us. They controlled the church. They controlled the school. They controlled the family. You have to wear a mask. You have to be six feet from each other. You can't breathe. You can't do this. You can't do that. God did not put us on this earth for us to be controlled by a godless secular humanist government. The next time they pulled that stunt, there's a verse here that says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. We will have church here as long as these walls are here and God is here. The next appearance of the new world order is when Satan says to Jesus, if you will fall down and worship me, I will give you the kingdoms of this world. And believe me, Satan was cast out of heaven and given the earth, and it was his to give. He became the prince of darkness. Prince is anyone who has authority in his kingdom. And when Satan, who is the prince of darkness, gets in darkness, he is the master. Where there is spiritual darkness, Satan has authority. So what does that have to do with you? When you read an occult book or you're watching a cult movie, you are inviting the prince of darkness to overtake your life. And believe me, he's anxious for the invitation. Sometimes the best thing on television is the knob that turns it off. Sadly, America's colleges and universities are now giving courses in the occult and witchcraft. 
We will bow to no one but Jesus Christ. The message is stop whining about the darkness and turn on the light. Shine, shine, shine. Give the Lord praise in the house. Then came Adolf Hitler who told the German people that he would bring to Europe a new world order that would last a thousand years. And the Third Reich, he promised peace and prosperity. He dragged Europe into the bowels of a living hell and turned Europe crimson red with rivers of human blood. Don't ever forget it, Nazism was a socialist religion. And it's a socialist religion that America is playing with right now in our leadership. Hitler was Germany's Messiah, I assure you. Today, the United Nations in New York wants a new world order. What does it mean? It means, listen to Brock Chisholm, the director of the UN World Health Organization, quote, to achieve world government, it is necessary to remove from the minds of men their individualism. You can't do it by yourself. You have to have the government. Actually, you don't need anybody but you and Jesus to get it done. (laughs) To remove the loyalty from their families. The absentee father in America is creating this. The public school teachers are now telling students, don't tell your parents what we're teaching you in school. That's breaking down the loyalty of the family. National patriotism, professional athletes refuse to honor that flag right there. That flag flies because a river of blood by America's sons and daughters have been shed for our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you can't salute that flag, leave this country. We don't need you. The fourth thing that the new world order has to destroy is religion. Churches are closing in America right now like they've never closed before. The objective is to get God out. The objective is to belittle the word of God. The objective is to finally take control of you by removing your freedom. I agree with the slogan. Get America out of the U.N. and get the U.N. out of America. Let's go to the chart. The next thing that's going to happen is the rapture of the church. We are going to be taken into the presence of God, where God is going to have the judgment seat of Christ in heaven for those who are raptured. These are only Christians. It does not mean whether you get to go to heaven or not. It's going to be the evaluation of your life. What you did for the Lord while you were on the earth. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This is Paul writing. It doesn't say if you want to. It says we must appear. The summons is there. That each one of us may receive the things done in their body. Listen according to what he has done, whether it is good or bad. I'm going to have to answer for every sermon I ever preached. You're going to have to answer for every soul you could have won but didn't. The judgment of sinners happens at the great white throne. Here is where Christians are judged. Go with me seven years and a thousand years And right about here is the great white throne judgment. You will be in hell a thousand and seven years when God brings you here to evaluate your life. The Bible says he will open the book of life right here and look at what you have not done. Number one, you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You will be sentenced to return to the lake of fire that burns forever and forever and forever. 
The Bible says, narrow is the way that leads to heaven, and broad is the way that leads to hell, meaning the majority of people are going in that direction simply because they never had a preacher who had the courage enough to look them in the eye and say, you must know Christ to get to heaven. I'm telling you, I'm going to answer to God for this day, and here's the answer. If Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, you're not going to heaven. When the church is gone, then comes the Antichrist. He's the rider on the white horse. He's on a white horse because he is an imitator of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to come riding on a white horse. He is the great pretender. He imitates, but he never duplicates. He is going to have a seven-year treaty with Israel right here. He will keep that treaty for three and a half years until the midpoint of the tribulation right here. At the midpoint, he's going to break that treaty. Right here, Jewish people are going to think this man is the Messiah. When he breaks, right here, the Gog me Gog. Right here at the midterm of the tribulation is where he will break that treaty with Israel. This three and a half year period is called the tribulation. This is the great tribulation. Why? Because the heartache happens that happens here is greater than here. The Antichrist is going to take, is going to force you to take his name. You will take the mark in your right hand or your forehead. If you don't take it, he will cut your head off. It's so much easier to get to know the Lord. It's just so much easier. Sometimes we get so caught up in the busyness of the day-to-day -day that we forget to do the simple things in life, such as exchanging a friendly greeting with our neighbors. It is time to be God's love in action, like the Good Samaritan. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. Does your life reflect His truth? We are called to be salt and light. Our actions and lifestyles need to reflect the light of Jesus to those around us. We are a living testimony of God's goodness. If we are not shining God's love on those around us, then who will they turn to? This month, with a special gift of any amount to the ministry, we'll send you a special Not By Bread Alone salt box. For your generous gift of $250 or more, we'll also send you a signed copy of Diana Hagee's commemorative cookbook, Not By Bread Alone, accompanied by an apron, cookbook stand, dish towel, and salt box. This set makes a special gift for a loved one. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org bread. You read the Bible of the Revelation, there are seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. Those are scattered out from one end to the other. The Antichrist will burst onto the world stage as the Prince of Peace. In the first part of the tribulation, the third temple in Jerusalem will be rebuilt. I went to Jerusalem to pray for the opening of the embassy. And when I walked off the platform, a rabbi ran up and grabbed my hand saying, now we can build the third temple. He knew the scripture. He knew the history. The Antichrist will fulfill the prophecy of Jesus in Matthew 24, 15 as the abomination of desolation. What is that? You've read that many times. What is the abomination of desolation? It's when the Antichrist sets up his image in the third temple during the tribulation period for people to worship. Those who do not worship him will be killed. That's when one third of the Jewish people will flee to Petra and be protected by God for the rest of the time until Jesus returns. The 144 Jewish believers will begin their evangelistic ministry to the Jewish people. How? There are 12,000 from the 12 tribes, 144,000. The message is Messiah is coming. Messiah is coming. How are they going to be converted to that? Just like St. Paul on the road to Damascus, stricken down by God. He was fighting Christianity. And God knocked him off his horse and blinded him. And he recognized he was talking to a supernatural power. And he said, who are you, Lord, and what would you have me do? 
That'll happen 144,000 times so that the message of Messiah coming will spread to everyone on the earth who's never heard it. The Gog Magog army invades Israel three and a half years after the treaty with the Antichrist is signed. Right here. The Gog Magog army is Russia, Iran, and several others that are going to join in the attack of Israel. This is three and a half years after the rapture of the church. This is a moment in time that is much closer than people want to discuss. The massive army of Russia, Iran, Libya, Turkey, and other anti-Semitic nations will be there. Their common denominator is hatred of the Jewish people. These God-hating anti-Semitic nations bound by their hatred of Israel will be slaughtered by the hand of God when they invade. Ezekiel 38, 18 says, God says to the enemies of Israel, my fury is going to come up in my face. For in my love and jealousy for the Jewish people, in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. The fact, Ezekiel 39, 2 says, God will slaughter five out of six of the army that comes in the Gog Magog entourage. This is Russia. This is Iran. That's tens of thousands of people in this invasionary force. And God is going to wipe them out first with an earthquake. He will bury a large part of that army. Then there will be friendly fire. There will be nine armies there. Confused by what's going on, they will turn their weapons on each other. But the thing that God is really going to enjoy is the hailstones, and he throws those. With the hailstones, he will kill the majority of that people. God has never done that before. You're mistaken. Go to Joshua chapter 10. When Israel is fighting for their life, God himself stoned the enemies of Israel with projectiles from heaven. And the Bible says... And those who were killed by the stones from the hand of God were greater than those who were killed by the children of Israel. We are now at the middle of the seven-year tribulation, three and a half years after the peace treaty with Israel. The Antichrist breaks the treaty. Why? Because a vacuum has been created. Russia, Iran, Libya, Turkey, and several anti-Semitic Islamic nations have been wiped out. There's a vacuum. The Antichrist wants to be the king of the world. He consolidates his empire by capturing all the nations whose armies God has just destroyed. Daniel 11, 42, 43 sets that up. The Antichrist is shot in the head and he recovers miraculously, emulating the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Satan himself is cast out of heaven and he makes war with Israel, Revelation 12, 7 through 13. Elijah and Enoch are the two witnesses that begin their three and a half year ministry in Israel. Elijah and Enoch will have supernatural power. They're going to wear sackcloth. But if anyone tries to touch Elijah to hurt him, he can spew fire out of his mouth that cremates them on the spot. He has the power to control the weather, no rain. Power to turn water to blood. Power to smite the earth with plagues as often as he desires to accomplish his mission. His mission is to inform the Jewish people about Messiah. Revelation 11, 3 through 6 carries that story. In the last half of the tribulation, the seven trumpet judgments are released upon the earth. These seven trumpets are right here, will happen here. would be boils, water to blood, a heat wave so hot people are scorched. The Bible says the rich and the powerful will crawl into the caves of the earth and beg God to die, and God will not allow it. The darkness will extend for periods of time. The Bible says the river Euphrates will dry up and provide China and their army, a way to get to the battle of Armageddon. Angels are going to kill one-third of the earth's population in one day. Think about that. 
There's what, 330 million Americans? That's 130 million dead people in this country in 24 hours. You think we have God's attention now? This is the most natural battlefield, Armageddon, on the face of the earth. Napoleon said that. The armies of the world could meet here and maneuver. The Bible describes the battle of Armageddon in apocalyptic terms that defy your imagination to get it. The battlefield is 38 miles long and 18 miles wide. There will be two armies. The king of the east will have at least 200 million. That's in the Bible. That's not my figure. 200 million. The king of the west, which will be Europe, the New World Order group, probably the remains of what's left of America, are going to meet to fight for global supremacy. That's when Jesus Christ returns right here, mounted on a white horse, and those creatures right behind him are the resurrected saints of God. That's you. And the Bible says blood is on the edge of his skirts. Why? Because when he comes to the battlefield, the Armageddon, he comes to the Mount of Olives, and he sweeps over the battlefield, and he kills everybody that's on that battlefield. His garments are soaked with the blood of Israel's enemies. You don't think God is awesome? Just get that picture in your mind. Hundreds of thousands of dead people knocked off in a pool of blood. God calls for all of the buzzards of the earth to come and to eat the carnage right there the second coming to Jerusalem. Then we enter a thousand years of perfect peace. You've never known perfect peace in your life. The Bible says the lamb will lay down with the lion. Isaiah says your children can play in the cockatrice nest. That's poisonous snakes. And you won't be concerned. Because in the millennial reign, it will be a time of absolute perfection for every person. Armageddon is described many times in the scripture, but we are going to experience in the 75 day interval, these things, the antichrist and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire. The antichrist image is removed from the temple of Jerusalem. The righteous Jews are regathered by angels from Petra in Matthew 24 to come to Jerusalem. Gentiles who took the mark of the antichrist are judged and cast into hell. And that will be some of you. You will get the idea that somehow you don't have to find Jesus Christ. And when all this happens, somehow you're going to work it out. I assure you, you're not. Righteous Jews from the Old Testament and New Testament are resurrected and rewarded. That's recorded in Daniel 12, 1 through 3, Isaiah 26, 19, Revelation 20 and 4. The millennial temple is constructed and its beauty defies imagination. 1,000 years of perfect peace. That's when the great white throne judgment of those who have rejected Jesus Christ will happen. God creates a new heaven and a new world right here. This is the Garden of Eden made over. In Genesis, the Garden of Eden. The last thing, the Garden of Eden. God gets us right back to where he wanted us. Right now, the king will say to those he left, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Depart from me, cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, and they will go into everlasting punishment. That's God's word. Is this you? Is this a member of your family? The most important decision you will make in your life is the decision to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. There's no such thing as indecision. You either decide or you decide not to decide. And if you don't know for sure you're going to heaven, believe me, praying a prayer of confession of sin is a lot better than allowing the Antichrist to cut your head off.
Would you say that's right? I think so. Let's stand. How many of you in this room can say, Pastor, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm ready to meet Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Slip your hand up right where you are. God bless you. Put your hand down. Some of you could not raise your hand. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I come to the house of the Lord today. I come to the house of the Lord today to confess that I am a sinner and confess that I am a sinner. I'm giving my life today and I'm giving my life today to the Lord Jesus Christ. To the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess that he is the Lord of my life. I confess that he is the Lord of my life. That I will live by the word of God and I will live by the word of God. And the blessings of the Lord and the blessings of will the Lord be upon my life will be upon my life and the lives of my family and the lives of my family in the authority of Jesus name in the authority of Jesus my name. sins are forgiven my sins are forgiven. my name is in the Lamb's book of life my name is in the Lamb's book I'm of life I'm going to heaven I'm going to in heaven in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen give the Lord a shout of praise when you speak the word of God you are releasing the blessing of the Lord into every part of your life. You are putting God in charge of the situation and putting the devil on notice that you are a child of the King. Stay tuned because at the end of this program, Pastor Hagee will speak a blessing over you and your family. Hagee Ministries continues to proclaim the truth of God's Word around the globe. Together, we are providing humanitarian aid across Israel, community service initiatives at home and abroad, and transforming the lives of young mothers at the Sanctuary of Hope. Your partnership today ensures we reach the generations of tomorrow through many of today's social media platforms and live web streaming. Become a legacy partner today. Call the number on your screen or go to jhm.org partner. Sign up for a week of full devotions led by Pastor Matt Hagee from the land of Israel. Twice each day during the week, you receive a video devotional that will refresh your spirit and strengthen your faith. Sign up by going to jhm.org slash Holy Week. Then look forward to receiving your first devotional on Sunday, March 24th. Let's experience Christ's journey to His resurrection together. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. If you need prayer, call our prayer line or visit our website. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his peace. May you walk from this assembly confident that you are a child of God, that your sins have been forgiven, that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that heaven is your home, and that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Receive that blessing and celebrate that victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. God bless you.